Hello, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this next video is going to be talking about the first order linear method for solving differential equations. So to start this technique, we first have to make sure it applies to our differential equation. The criteria to apply this technique is that we need a first order linear differential equation. So we look at the differential equation we have here, and we can check the order by looking at the highest order derivative. We have a first derivative right there. So this is a first order differential equation. And then we need to check all the, the y pieces to see if it really is linear. So in this case, I have a derivative, but it's just raised to the first power. It's not the argument of a nonlinear function. Same thing for my, my y value. It's not raised to any power. It's not the argument of a nonlinear function. I don't have the product of y or its derivatives. So this does look like a linear differential equation. So I do have a first order linear differential equation. And the first step of my technique is to put it in standard form. If it's a first order linear differential equation, we can always write it in this form. And the idea here is that leading coefficient of the y prime term, the dy dx term, is just 1. In my case, I have an x out front, so that means to put my equation in standard form, I have to divide it through by x. So when I do that, I will get dy dx plus 3 over x times y is equal to x. Now that I'm in standard form, I can properly identify what my p of x is. In this case, I see my p of x, which is a coefficient of the y term, is equal to 3 over x. And then I can use that p of x value to calculate my integrating factor. My formula for my integrating factor is right there. In the class, we've talked about why it has that form, but for now, we'll just, uh, we'll just use it. That means my integrating factor is e raised to the integral of 3 over x dx. And then I need to do the integration. So in this case, I will pull out my factor of 3. I'll be integrating 1 over x, which will be the natural log of the absolute value of x. Then I use some of my log properties to rewrite this as e raised to the natural log of x cubed. And then e raised to the natural log of something is just that something. So it looks like I get an integrating factor of x cubed. So I put the equation in standard form. I've identified my p of x, and I've used it to calculate my integrating factor. Now, why do we need this integrating factor? Well, because if we multiply through our differential equation by our integrating factor, so I'm multiplying through that guy by x cubed, I will get this expression. And if we do that, the left-hand side will actually become the derivative of the product of some pieces. So the left-hand side will always simplify to the derivative of the dependent variable times the integrating factor. And of course, we can verify that if we want by taking the derivative and using the product rule. In this case, we'll assume it to be true. The right-hand side will be x to the fourth. Now, the value of that, the value of this technique is that we're just taking our differential equation. We're essentially rewriting it using algebra and some derivative properties as the derivative of something equals some function of x. We've manipulated the equation so that now we can straight integrate this. So if I integrate both sides with respect to x, on the left I'll just get y times x cubed. On the right hand side I'll get x to the fifth over 5 plus my constant. Make sure you bring your constant in right away as soon as you do the integration here. And then my last step is just to solve for y. So to do that I'll multiply it through by x to the negative 3. I will get y is equal to x squared over 5 plus c times x to the negative 3. And that will be my final solution. And once we've written our solution in that form, then we can take a little look to see if we can learn anything about how our solution behaves. For instance, as time, or x in this case, gets large, as our independent value uh, increases. In this case, I see that as x gets big, that one of these terms is going to disappear. That term is, which means that term is called a transient term. And so as time gets big, as x gets big, our solution will look like x squared over 5. All right, that concludes this instruction on first-order linear method. Thank you.